Act Three, Part Two of Faust, Part Two by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Translated by Bayard Taylor. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The scene of action is completely transformed. Against a range of rocky caverns, close bowers are constructed. A shadowy grove extends to the foot of the rocks, which rise on all sides. Faust and Helena are not seen. The chorus lies scattered about, sleeping. How long these maidens have been sleeping, know I not. If they allowed themselves to dream, what now mine eyes so clearly saw, is equally unknown to me. Therefore I wake them. They, the young, shall be amazed, ye also bearded ones who sit below in wait, solution of these marvels finally to see. Awake, arise, and shake from off your locks the dew, the slumber from your eyes, listen and cease to blink. Speak and tell us, quickly tell us, all the wonders that have happened. We shall hear with greater pleasure, if belief we cannot give it. For both I and mind are weary to behold these rocks alone. Children, you have hardly rubbed your eyes, and are you weary now? Hear me, then. Within these caverns, in the grottoes and the arbors, screen and shelter have been lent, as unto twain idyllic lovers, to our Lord and to our Lady. How, within there? Separated from the world, me only did they summon to their quiet service. Honoured thus, I stood beside them, but, as fit in one so trusted, looked around at something other, turning here and there at random, seeking roots and bark and mosses, being skilled in healing simples, and the twain were left alone. Speakest thou as if within were spaces roomy as the world is? Wood and meadow, lakes and rivers, what a fable dost thou spin? Certainly, ye inexperienced, those are unexplored recesses, hall on hall and court on court succeeding, musingly I tracked. All at once a laughter echoes through the spaces of the caverns. As I look, a boy is leaping from the mother's lap to father's, from the father to the mother. The caressing and the dandling, teasing pranks of silly fondness, cry of sport and shout of rapture, they alternate deafen me. He, a genius naked, wingless, like a fawn without the beasthood, leaps upon the solid pavement. Yet the pavement now reacting sends him flying high in air, and at the second bound or third he seems to graze the vaulted roof. Cries disquieted the mother. Leap repeatedly at pleasure, but beware of flying, for prohibited is flight to thee and thus warns the faithful father, dwells in earth the force elastic, which thee upwards thus impelleth, touch but with thy toe the surface, like the son of earth, Anatius, straightway art thou strong again. So he springs upon the rocky masses, from a dizzy cornice to another, and around, as springs a ball when sharply struck. Yet, a sudden, in a crevice of the hollow gulf he's vanished, and it seemeth we have lost him. Mother mourns and father comforts. Shoulder shrugging, anxiously I stand. But now, again what vision! Are there treasures yonder hidden? Garments stripped with broidered blossoms hath he worthily assumed. Tassels from his shoulders swaying, fillets flutter round his bosom, in his hand the golden lyre, completely like a little phoebus cheerily to the brink he steps the jutting edge we stand astounded and the parents in their rapture clasp each other to the heart what around his head is shining what it is were hard to warrant whether golden gods or flame of all subduing strength of soul so he moves with stately gesture even as boy himself proclaiming future master of all beauty all the melodies eternal throbbing in his flesh and blood and you shall thus delighted hear him thus shall you behold him with a wonder never felt before callest thou a marvel this cretus begotten poetic didactical word 
Hast, Hast thou listened, listened to, to never? never? Never yet hearkened Ionia's? Never received also Hella's godlike heroical treasure of ancient primitive legends? All that ever happens now in the present mocks like a mournful echo the grander days of the fathers. Not comparable is thy story unto that loveliest falsehood, then truth, truth more credible, sung of the son of Maya. This strong and delicate yet scarcely delivered suckling, swathe ye in purest downy bands, bind ye in precious diapered stuffs, as is the gossiping nurse's unreasonable notion. Strongly and daintily draws no less, now the robe the flexible, firm yet elastic body, cunningly out and leaveth the close, purple impeding shell, quietly there in its place, like the completed butterfly, which from the chilly chrysalid nimbly, pinion unfolding, slips, boldly and willfully fluttering through sunshine pervaded ether. So he too the sprightliest, that unto thieves and jugglers, all the seekers of profit as well, he the favorable daemon was. Did he speedily manifest by the skillfullest artifice, Straight from the ruler of ocean stole he the trident from Ares himself. Slyly the sword from the scabbard, arrows and bow from Phoebus, and then tongs that have faced us was using. Even from Zeus the father, bolts had he filched, had the fire not scared him. Eros also he overcame, in light-tripping wrestling match. Then from Cyprus, as she caressed him, plundered the zone from her bosom. An exquisite, purely melodious music of stringed instruments resounds from the cavern. All become attentive, and soon appear to be deeply moved. From this point to the pause designated, there is a full musical accompaniment. Hark, the music, pure and golden, free from fables be at last. All your gods, the medley olden, let depart, their day is past. You no more are comprehended, we require a higher part. By the heart must be expended what shall work upon the heart. She retires towards the rocks. If the flattering music presses, fearful being to thine ears, we, restored to health, confess us, softened to the joy of tears. Let the sun be missed from heaven. When the soul is bright with morn, what the world has never given, now within our hearts is born. Helena, Faust, Euphorion, in the costume already described. Hear ye songs of childish pleasure, ye are moved to playful glee. See me thus dance in measure, leap your hearts parentally. Love in human wise to bless us, in a noble pair must be. But divinely to possess us, it must form a precious three. All we seek has therefore found us. I am thine, and thou art mine. So we stand, as love hath bound us. Other fortune we resign. Many years shall they, delighted, gather from the shining boy, double bliss for hearts united, in their union what a joy. Let me be skipping, let me be leaping, to soar and circle through ether sweeping, is now the passion that me hath won. But gently, gently, not rashly faring, lest plunge and ruin repay thy daring, perchance destroy thee, our darling son. I will no longer stagnate below here. Let go my tresses, my hands let go here. Let go my garments, they all are mine. Oh, think, bethink thee to whom thou belongest, how it would grieve us, and how thou wrongest the fortune fairest. Mine, his, and thine. Soon shall, I fear, I fear me, the sweet bond untwine. Curb, thou unfortunate, for our desiring, thine over-importunate, lofty aspiring, rurally quiet, brighten the plain. Since you will that I try it, my flight I restrain. Winding in dance through the chorus, and drawing them with him. Round them I hover free, gay is the race. Is this the melody? Move I with grace? Yes, that is featly done. Lead them through every one mazes of art. Soon let it ended be. 
Sight of such jugglery troubles my heart. Chorus with Euphorion, dancing nimbly and singing in interlinking ranks. When, when thou thine arms so fair, fair charmingly liftest, the curls of thy shining hair shakest and shiftest. When thou with foot, foot so light brushest the earth in flight, hither and, and forth, forth again, leading the linked chain, then is thy goal in sight, loveliest boy. All of our hearts in joy round thee unite. Pause. Not yet repose, you light-footed rose. Now to new play, forth and away. I am the hunter, you are the game. Wouldst thou acquire us, be not so fast. We, we are desirous, only at last. Clasping thy beauty, beauty kisses to claim. claim. Through groves and through hedges, or cliffs and or ledges, Lightly what fell to me, that I detest, What I compelled to me pleases me best. How perverse, how, how wild he's growing, growing Vain to hope for moderation, moderation. Now it sounds like bugles blowing, Over vale and forest peeling. What disorder! What a brawl! Chorus entering singly in haste. Forth from us with swiftness ran he, Spurning us with scornful feeling, now he drags from out the many here the wildest one of all. Euphorion bearing a young maiden. Here I drag the little racer, and by force will I embrace her. For my bliss and for my zest, press the fair resisting breast. Kiss the mouth repellent still, manifest my strength and will. Let me go. This frame enfoldeth also courage, strength of soul. Strong as thine, our will upholdeth when another would control. I am in strait, thou deemest. What force thine arm would claim? Hold me, fool, and ere thou dreamest, I will scorch thee in my game. She turns to flame and flashes up in the air. To the airy spaces follow, follow me to the cavern's hollow, snatch and hold thy vanished aim. Euphorion shaking off the flames. Rocks all around me here. Over the forests hung, why should they bound me here? Still am I fresh and young. Tempests are waking now, billows are breaking now. Both far away I hear, fain would be near. He leaps ever farther over the rocks. Helena, Faust, and Chorus. Shall, Shall me like, like dost, dost thou aspire? aspire? Fearful, Fearful of, of the, the fall, fall are we. we. I must clamber even higher, even further I must see. Now where I am I spy, midst of the isle am I, midst of Pelop's land, kindred in soul I stand. Bide thou by, by Groven Hill, Hill, peacefully rather, we from the vineyard's will, grapes for thee gather, grapes from the ridges tanned, figs and the apples gold, ah, yet the lovely land, loving behold. Dream ye the peaceful day? Dream then, who may. War is the countersign, victory were divine. Who peace and unity scorneth for war's array, with impunity slays his hope of a better day. They who this land have led, through danger and dread, free, boundlessly brave, lavish of blood they gave, may they with glorious, untamable might make us victorious now in the fight. Look aloft, he seeks the farness, yet to us not small he seems. As for battle, as in harness, he like steel and silver gleams. Walls and towers no more immuring, each in vigor stands confessed. Fortress firm and most endearing is the soldier's iron breast. Would ye dwell in freemen's houses? Arm and forth in combat wild? See as Amazons, your spouses, and a hero every child. Hallowed poesy, heavenward mounting sea, Shining the fairest star, Farther and still more far, Yet from the distance blown, Hear we the lightest tone, And raptured are. No, tis no child which thou beholdest, A youth in arms with haughty brow, And with the strongest, freest, boldest, His soul is pledged in manly vow. I go, for lo, the path to glory opens now, Helena and Faust. 
Thou, thou thy being, being scarcely learnest, scarcely feel'st the day's glad beam, when from giddy steeps thou yearnest for the place of pain supreme. Are then we naught to thee? Is the gracious bond a dream? And hear ye thunder on the oceans, from land the thunder echoes call, in dust and foam, with fierce commotion, the armies shock, the heroes fall, the command is sword in hand, to die, to certain once for all. Helena, Faust, and Chorus What, what a horror! horror. We, we shall, shall rue it! it. Ah, is, is death, death command to thee? thee? Shall I from the distance view it? No, the fate be shared by me. Helena, Faust, and Chorus Danger his arrogance, his arrogance brings, brings fatally, fatally bold. Yes, and a pair of wings see me unfold. Thither I must, and thus grant me the flight. He casts himself into the air. The garments bear him a moment. His head is illuminated, and a streak of light follows. Chorus. Icarus, Icarus, Icarus sorrowful sight. sight. A beautiful youth falls at the feet of the parents. We imagine that in the dead body we perceive a well-known form, yet the corporeal part vanishes at once, and the aureole rises like a comet towards heaven. The garment, mantle, and lyre remain upon the ground. Helena and Faust Joy is followed, followed when, when scarce enjoyed, enjoyed by, by bitterest moan. moan. Euphorion from the depths Leave me here in the gloomy void. Mother, not thus alone. Pause. Chorus. Dirge. Not alone, where'er thou bidest, for we know thee what thou art. Ah, if from the day thou hidest, still to thee will cling each heart. Scarce we venture to lament thee, singing envious of thy fate, for in storm and sun were lent thee, Song and courage, fair and great. Ah, for earthly fortune fashioned, Strength was thine and proud descent, Early erring or impassioned, Youth, alas, from thee was rent. For though the world thine eye was rarest, All the heart to thee was known, Thine were loves of women fairest, And a song thy very own. Yet thou rannest uncontrollably, in the net the fancies draw. Thus thyself divorcing boldly, as from custom, so from law, till the highest thought expended, set at last thy courage free. Thou wouldst win achievement splendid, but it was not given to thee. Unto whom then, question dreary, destiny will never heed, when in evil days and weary, Silently the people bleed, but new songs shall still elate them. Bow no longer and deplore, for the soil shall generate them, as it hath done heretofore. Complete pause, the music ceases. Helena to Faust Also in me, alas, an old word proves its truth, that bliss and beauty ne'er enduringly unite. Torn is the link of life, no less than that of love. So, both lamenting, painfully I say, Farewell, and cast myself again once only in thine arms. Receive, Persephone, receive the boy and me. She embraces Faust, her corporeal part disappears, Her garment and veil remain in his arms. Forkias to Faust Hold fast what now alone remains to thee. The garment let not go. Already twitch the demons at its skirts, and they would fain to the nether regions drag it. Hold it fast. It is no more the goddess thou hast lost, but godlike is it. For thy use employ the grand and priceless gift, and soar aloft. Twill bear thee swift from all things mean and low, to ether high, so long thou canst endure. We'll meet again, far, very far from here. Helena's garments dissolve into clouds, surround Faust, lift him aloft in the air, and move away with him. Phorkias takes up Euphorion's tunic, mantle, and lyre from the earth, 
steps forward to the proscenium, holds aloft these remains, and speaks. Good leavings have I still discovered. The flame has vanished where it hovered, yet for the world no tears I spend. Enough remains to start the poets living, and envy in their guilds to send. And if their talents are beyond my giving, at least the costume I can lend. She seats herself upon a column in the proscenium. Panthelis. Now hasten, maidens, we are from the magic freed, the old Thessalian trollop's mind compelling spell, freed from the jingling drone of much bewildered sound, the ear confusing, and still more the inner sense. Down, then, to Hades. Since beforehand went the queen, with solemn step descending, now upon the tracks, let straightway follow her to the step of faithful maids. Her shall we find beside the unfathom gloomy king. Queens, of course, are satisfied everywhere. Even in Hades take they highest rank, proudly associate with their peers, with Persephone closely allied. We, however, in the background of the asphodel besprinkled meadows, with the endless rows of poplars, and the fruitless willows ever mated. What amusement, then, have we? bat like to squeak and twitter in whispers uncheery and ghostly. Who hath not won a name, and seeks not noble works, belongs to the elements. Away, then, ye, my own intense desire with my queen to be. Service and faith secure the individual life. Exit. Given again to the daylight are we, Persons no more, tis true. We feel it and know it, but to Hades return we never. Nature, the ever-living, makes to us spirits valid as claim, and we to her also. Part of the Chorus We, in trembling whispers, swaying rustle of a thousand branches, sweetly rocked, will lightly lure the rills of life, the root-born, upwards to the twigs, and or with foliage or exuberant gush of blossoms, will we freely deck their flying hair for prosperous airy growth. Then, when falls the fruit, we'll straightway gather gladdened herds and people, swiftly coming, briskly pressing, for the picking and the tasting. All, as if before the early gods, will then around us bend. A second part. We, beside these rocks, upon the far-off shining glassy mirror, Coaxingly will bend and fluctuate, moving with the gentle waters. We to every sound will hearken, song of bird or reedy piping. Though the dreadful voice of Pan, a ready answer shall we give. Come some murmur, we remurmur, thunder we are thunders waking, in reverberating crashes, doubly, trebly, tenfold flung. A third part. Sisters we, of nimbler fancy, hasten with the brooklet onward. For Alora's yonder distant, richly mantled mountain ranges, ever downwards, ever deeper, in meandering curves we water, first the meadow, then the pasture, then the garden round the house, marked by slender peaks of cypress, shooting clearly into ether, o'er the landscape and the waters, and the fading line of shore. A fourth part. Fare ye others at your pleasure, we will girdle and o'er rustle the completely planted hillside where the sprouting vines are green. There at every hour the passion of the vintager is witnessed, and the loving diligence that hath so doubtful a result. Now with hoe and now with shovel, then with hilling, pruning, tying, unto all the gods be prayeth, chiefly to the sun's bright god. Small concern hath pampered Bacchus for his faithful servant's welfare, but in arbors, rests, and caverns, toying with the youngest fawn. For his semi-drunken visions, whatsoe'er he hath needed, it is furnished him in wineskins, and in amphorae and vessels. Right and left in cool recesses, sell it for eternal time. But if now the gods together, Helios before the others, have with breeze and dew and warmth, and glow the berries filled with juice, where the vintager in silence laboured, all is life and motion, every trellis stirs and rustles, and they go from stake to stake. Baskets creak and buckets rattle, 
Groaning tubs are borne on back, all towards the vat enormous, and the treader's lusty dance. So is then the sacred bounty of the pure-born juicy berries, rudely trodden, foaming, spearding, they are mixed and grimly crushed. Now the ear is pierced with cymbals, and the dash of brazen bosses, for behold is Dionysus, from his mysteries revealed. For he comes with goat-foot satyrs, whirling goat-foot satresses, while amid the rota Salinus's big-eared beast unruly brays, naught is spared. The cloven hoofs tread down all decent custom, all the senses whirl bewildered, fearfully the ear is stunned, drunkards fumble for the goblets, overfull our heads and paunches, here and there hath one misgivings, yet increases thus the tumult, for the fresher must to gamer, empty they the ancient skin. The curtain falls. Forques in the proscenium rises to a giant height, steps down from the cotherni, removes her mask and veil, and reveals herself as Mephistopheles, in order, so far as it may be necessary, to comment upon the piece by way of epilogue. End of Act 3, Part 2